Rub up your engines! Well, here we go with Ram lack of quality again. They're recalling 300,000 vehicles because they might start on fire. They're saying park them outside, do not park them in your garage so you don't burn your house down. Now this is almost 341,000 Ram trucks. They have to replace electrical connectors because they're so cheaply made they can overheat and start on fire. Now Stellantis beginning to notify owners next month by letter, letter, hey we're really living in a dinosaur age just now. So in the meantime they're just telling everybody with them park your Ram truck outside <laughs> don't put it in your garage it might burn your house down right don't park it under a tree either it might burn your trees down <laughs> who knows what will happen right <laughs> It just amazes me the lack of quality with these companies and as I predicted when Stellantis took over Chrysler Ram the quality is going to go down guess what it has and it wasn't that high up to begin with kind of sad when Mercedes owned Chrysler and it was Daimler Chrysler the quality started to go up but the Germans lost so much money they ran away then Fiat bought it and let's see they tell you got to park your big old truck outside because it might start on fire not really <laughs> a show of good quality huh? but we'll tell you about it next month we're not going to tell you right now we'll wait maybe some other trucks will burn down in the meantime but hey <laughs> so if you're worried you got a ramp truck hey get your VIN number out and check with it so you can see if it's one you should park outside until they tell you you can bring it in and get it fixed <laughs> you pay all this money for these giant trucks and that's how they treat you if you're not a rich man don't buy them. the outsider says Scotty you're the best my 2016 Tundra makes a disturbing engine clack for two seconds after startup those have variable valve timing the timing chain they'll often clack for a couple of seconds because the timing chain tensioner is carboned up now it's kind of a pain taking the front of the engine apart and replacing that stuff so what you want to try is my friend Bernie in Albuquerque he runs ATS has solutions and he has a flush an engine flush that gets rid of carbon and I've worked on many of those that I put the flush in the engine rev it up to about 2,000 rpms for about 20 30 minutes with a fan in front of the car to keep the engine cool then you change the oil and filter and many times the noise will go away because the tensioner is no longer carboned up and it pops out immediately when you start the engine the tensioner works on oil pressure and if it's clogged up it takes a while for the oil pressure a few seconds to build up and pop it out but if it's clean it won't try that that's often the best fix if not you got to take it apart and replace it you might need a new timing chain too if you have high mileage but a lot of times the engine flush will fix it. Andrew O'Connor says Scotty greetings from Nova Scotia the land of the trailer park boys <laughs> I'm a big fan <laughs> my 2011 Tacoma says 75 W90 for transfer case and 80 W90 for differentials can I use 80 and 90 for both will it harm anything no it won't harm anything that little tiny differential isn't going to make any difference at all you do want to change it of course because a hey, splash lubrication eventually it gets dirty and then it eats the seals up and doesn't work as well and all you got to do is take the drain plug drain it out take the fill plug in the side fill it until it comes out of the full plug and that's it simple to do but yeah it's perfectly fine to do that. it won't hurt anything Andrew O'Connor says Scott I'm a student my climate change class they suggest less pollution do you think we pollute less if we drive a Toyota for 20 years or drive a hybrid throwaway for 8 to 10 years thanks the hybrid ones they're mainly running on gasoline engines and the electric is a boost it doesn't really save all that much and what you pay for it in the long run it generally isn't worth the price differential you're not polluting less now you would be polluting less if you had an electric car in terms of what your actual car is doing but of course it takes a ton of pollution to create the electric car to create the lithium batteries they pollute the heck out of water systems where they do it and then the electricity has to be generated in one which produces pollution so even the verdict's not even out there it might be just a tiny bit less polluting in the long run than running a gasoline car but it isn't the big dramatic change that these greenies are trying to pretend that it is it's one time bizarre that the greenies and the corporations are together because the greenies want oh electric is going to save us and the corporations want to sell you crap and the electric cars are expensive so they can sell you crappy electric cars for a lot of money that break down fast of course they're all for it especially when the government as the Biden administration is gives them billions of dollars of tax incentives to do so Rudy Getz says is it wise to avoid 2022 2022 23 cars and trucks due to the work shutdowns assembly line staff with unfocused or replacement workers sad but true I have to say yes I've even seen Toyotas that didn't have the quality that they used to it's created a giant rat's nest there were workers who were just replacement workers here go in there put it together they had bad enough take GM and Ford they had bad enough problem with their regular workers now they had replacement workers what did Ford say oh 
Uh, it took years to create this mess we're having with quality control. And it'll take years to clear it up. Yeah, years. Well, so wait years till you buy one if you're smart with your money, I'll tell you. I've seen problems with them, and I, I never buy new cars anyway, so I'm too cheap. Why well, pay 100% for a car when, let's say, you can buy a Toyota that might last three, 400,000 miles? Buy one with 80,000 miles on it, and you can pay, well, I'm really cheap. I wait till they're old. I don't care about their age. I only care about the mileage. So if I can get one that's got 80,000 miles on it for like one eighth of the price of the new car and it's still got maybe you know 60 70 percent of its life left boy you're making out like a bandit then suradakis who says scotty i'm finding drum brakes last longer than discs due to rust dirt and moisture in the rust belt do you agree thanks to the vids i agree entirely so here's the thing drum brakes are relatively enclosed you got the drum the shoes are inside spinning around pretty much sealed from the elements. Disc brakes, on the other hand, are totally open systems. The rotor that's always going to rust because it's sitting out there with rain getting on it. The calipers that are sitting, rain, salt especially, gets on them and corrodes them. Where the drums actually will last longer up north. It's another kind of sign of the times that technology evolves, but the long lasting of the old technology is gone, replaced by new technology that wears out faster. Of course, the manufacturers love that. Then they can sell you a new car with the other one rusts away. The rotors are made out of what? Steel. Bare steel. They're out in the open. Of course they're going to rust. My son in Massachusetts, he had to replace the rotors when his Camry was three years old. I had ones in Texas for 20 years old and they're still working, you know, so it is true. The drums will last longer in a rust environment. Damien Pesor says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on 80s, 90s Bentley Brooklyn's Turbo R sedan? Are they reliable cars? It's certainly reliable. They will break down all the time. Those are rich men's toys, Bentleys, right? If you have to ask what the price to repair them is, you don't buy a Bentley. You don't have the money. They were great cars. If you go back decades and decades and decades, long before the 80s. I had a customer, had a Bentley in the 80s. What a pile of junk. The whole exhaust system just fell off of it one time. You went to a car wash, the entire exhaust system fell off in the car wash. No, they're not reliable cars. They're rich men's toys. Well, at least the Germans haven't totally lost their minds yet. A German farmer was suing Volkswagen saying they're destroying the climate and ruining his crops. But the German judge said, nine and threw it out of court. Farmer Ulf Kramer in Germany decided he was going to sue Volkswagen in court because they were leading to global climate change and it was destroying its crops. He said that Volkswagen was partly to blame because they produced gasoline vehicles, generate greenhouse gas emissions, make it hotter, right? Now, the court said it was unfounded because they said you couldn't establish that him suing Volkswagen would be remedied by what he wants is them to stop making gasoline and diesel powered cars. <laughs> I mean, you have to realize the percentage of stuff. Uh, the last I read, it was 25% of the pollution comes from cars. So 75% comes from other. And if he's suing Volkswagen, one company, what is that going to affect? What small percentage of that already? One quarter, 25%. So the judge threw it out. Now, in Germany, by 2040, they say they're not going to sell gasoline and diesel cars by 2040. He wanted them to up the ante to make it a lot sooner. That's why he was suing them. And Volkswagen, part of their defense was, hey, look, we're going towards electric vehicles. You know, they're making a lot of electric vehicles. They're making them in Tennessee now. So it's not like they're not doing anything. Maybe he would have had better luck suing Toyota that doesn't make as many electric vehicles. But then again, he's a German and he's in Germany. I don't think they'd care in Japan what he's thinking. So at least the German judges haven't lost their minds yet. <laughs> This farmer decided to sue Volkswagen over they're destroying the earth. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are destroying earth. You could sue just about every corporation out there. I mean, come on now. So at least they haven't completely lost their minds in the judicial system of Germany. At least not yet. Why, why me? He says, hey, Mr. Kilmer, how was your trip to Chicago? We had a great time. Took the grandkids to the Museum of Science and Industry. We stayed on the Miracle Mile. We went to Chinatown because my daughter-in-law's Chinese had great dim sum. Some there, oh, I recommend Chicago. I've never been to the Chinatown in Chicago, but uh, it's phenomenal. The restaurants are phenomenal, right? We just Ubered every. We saw Blue Man Group. That was cool too. Ate at a hot dog stand by the Blue Man Group, and that was phenomenal. Hot dogs and Phillies. Better Phillies than they have in Philadelphia. I like the Chicago version of the Philly better myself anyways. And on the way back, we stopped at my old alumni, the University of Illinois. I haven't been there in 44 years years. We drove in. I looked at Davenport Hall where I taught. <laughs> the quad's still the same. The city's completely different. But strangely enough, Murphy's Bar was still in business. We used to go there on Friday and I'd say the best fish fry in the world. And there was Murphy's Pub. It is still in business 44 years later. 
So we'll go there again in the summer so the kids can go swimming in Lake Michigan. It was a bit too cold now. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.